Well, hello there. Wow, I just had to switch the camera. I was um, had my overhead camera on, and I realized that at the last second. Whoa, I better get my other camera here. So welcome. Uh, I hope you had a great Friday. Uh, happy Friday to you. And welcome to this uh, paint pouring demo. It's going to be a, a fun little qu relatively quick demo tonight. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, an open cup pour, which is one of my favorites. I love that uh, technique. And I've mixed up a few different colors. This is kind of a, a hybrid sort of color palette. I have some kind of fall colors uh, and also a couple Halloweenish type of colors. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I really don't know uh, what's going to happen with this color palette, but it should be a fun one. So I will um, show you the colors in just a second. First of all, I'll um, talk about my panel first. It's going to be a, a 14 by 28 painting tonight. And I have a, a cradled panel that I'm going to be working on. And uh, I make these panels and uh, I really, really like them. I love pouring on really smooth surfaces. Um, and this is a uh, thin birch panel and it's got sides and uh, um, it's uh, I've got tape on the back and I have my little hooks in it. So it's all ready to go. I'm very excited about this one. So we've got some people joining us. Hello, welcome everyone. We got Monique and Electra is here. We got Jan. Hey, Jan, Ellis, Kim, Donna is here. Awesome. Hey, Donna. Um, so people are rolling in. Uh, we're just getting started. I'm going to be doing an open cup pour tonight, uh, which is one of my favorite techniques. And um, it's kind of a hybrid color palette. I think I mentioned that earlier. Um, but I'll show you all the colors in just a second. Um, and then we're going to be working on a uh, we have a black base coat down. So this is going to be a, a black base coat. And with open cup, you kind of need a puddle um, in the center of your canvas uh, to kind of flip your cup over in. So it's going to be a black base today. And I've got to get my little, I forgot to pull it out, my trusty uh, flip cupper tool, which is just kind of a kitchen scraper, but it's a very handy tool. So I've got that all ready to go. So um, welcome, everybody. Um, happy Friday. Hope you had a great uh, week. Um, JC is here. Don is here. Awesome. So we've got a, a packed house. Awesome. Annette is here. Libby. Hey, Joanne is here. Um, Lydia, Ellis. Wow, we've got a whole bunch of people. That's fantastic. So I'm going to... Um, uh, uh, Kim is here. Ellis is here. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. So I am going to um, flip the camera over in just a second. I'll show you the color palette and uh, we'll layer the cup and I'll uh, do an open cup pour. We'll see what happens. Um, and uh, if you have any questions throughout, um, put them in the comments or maybe hold on to them uh, until I'm done with the actual uh, demo. And then I can, you could put them in the comments and I will answer them for you if, um, we have time, which I think we will. So um, if you put them in right away, um, sometimes I miss them because all these other comments come in. So, um, but uh, if you hold on to them, hold on to them for uh, till through we're through the demo, that'd probably be the best. Uh, and then I'll answer them all at once. So, but if uh, please feel free to comment, um, that would be awesome. And uh, so cool. So um, got some great comments. Everyone's here. So let's get started. I will uh, flip over to the other camera and let's take a look at the colors we're going to be using um, tonight. So here we go. Here is my panel. It's all ready to go. So this is kind of a hybrid um, fall slash Halloween color palette. And uh, we'll see what happens. I really don't know. <laughs> so. But uh, let's take a look. We've got gold here. This is the Amsterdam gold light. Um, I have a feeling this is going to create some interesting cells in the open cup. I've got uh, a little bit of copper here, which is a master's touch. Um, they actually call it red brown, but it's it's copper. Um, and we have a little bit of crimson. I, I went with this. It's a little darker red. This is an artist loft crimson. Um, I wanted to stay away from the super bright pyrrole red. That's my favorite red, but tonight we're going to just be using this 
uh, crimson, which is a little softer red. And I've got uh, some uh, quinacridone magenta. This is the Liquitex Basics uh, quinacridone magenta. It's kind of a Halloweenish color. I've got some metallic purple here, which is a, a fun color. This is from um, Blick, Blick brand color. And I've got a big thing of black right here. So let me take the top off. So the black will be our uh, base coat. And I'm also going to incorporate it in uh, a layer or two. So we'll be using, how many is that? This is a very warm palette. So we've got, they're all warm colors to an extent. Extent. Uh, these two are actually uh, verging on the cooler side of the warm color palette, but they're still considered warm colors. So it's a, it's a fun palette. I think I'm um, excited to see what happens. We've only got one real light color in here, which is the gold. So this is going to be much more of a uh, mid-value to dark uh, painting. We don't have a lot of bright, um, bright light uh, values, but the gold I think will suffice. And I'm going to be using the gold uh, quite a bit. So it should be popping up here and there throughout the painting. At least I hope so. Um, with gold, it's always a little bit of a question mark. You're never quite sure. But uh, I have a good feeling about this one. The Amsterdam gold tends to create some very cool cells. So I'll discuss how I'm going to layer everything in a second. So got my uh, panel already. And of course, I'm filling out my um, my journal page here. So I got my journal page all filled out up to this point. So um, it's going to be a floating cup, 14 by 18. So we need 10 ounces of paint for this cup, which is quite a bit. Um, and then I have all my colors and my brands. And then I've uh, laid out my order of the colors I want to add to my cup. So we'll see how this goes. I've never worked with this color palette before, at least all these colors combined. So, you know, we'll see what happens. So, but I will, uh, if this turns out good, which I hope it does, I'll do up a nicer version of this and I'll put it in the members area of the, uh, the pouring studio membership. So uh, the members can have access to it if they want to give this uh, painting a try, depending on what it looks like. So that is what I'm going to be doing. And let me, I need to keep this kind of close by so I can uh, look at my colors. Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to, uh, let me remove, actually I'll, let's layer the cup first. So I've got my cup right here. This is a, I think it's a 12 ounce cup, just a regular plastic cup. Um, and I've got it marked to how much paint we need, 10 ounces. So I will uh, put that right there. Actually, I'm going to move this forward and put it down here because I can, so I can kind of see in there a little bit better. And so let's start with our layering. I'm going to start with gold first. So a layer of gold. This is probably going to be about maybe two layers of, of the colors. Then I'm going with the copper. Then I'm going to go with the red. And let's see. Then I think I'm going to add a little bit of the black. And then on top of the black, I'm going to add a little more gold. But this time, instead of doing a floating layer, I'm going to do a high pour. So I'm going to hold the cup up high and shoot the gold in there. So the gold will have shot kind of all the way down and it's gonna start blending and mixing with some of those other colors. And then we're gonna go over and use the magenta. And finally, the purple, metallic purple. And then I think, what am I gonna do? A little bit of black. And I like that. I think I'm going to just do the same uh, order again. So I'm going to go back to my gold. This time I'm going to just do the re regular uh, floating layer of the gold. And then we were going to do our copper. 
and our red. And then back to our black a little bit. And now, again, I'm going to do a high pour of the gold. So I'm going to hold the cup high, and it's going to shoot right in there and uh, start blending all that stuff together, which I think is going to make it interesting, I hope. And then after that, we have uh, back to magenta, and then back to purple. And I think that's it. So we're going to call that good for our cup. So I'm going to move our paints out of the way. Let me move the black over here. And let's take this big old cup of paint. I'll put that aside so I don't dump it over. And pull the panel back. So now we're going to just uh, spread out a little base coat. And this is kind of a two-step process with the uh, floating cup. So that's pretty good. So I'm going to quickly spread that out. And with uh, the floating cup and also the open cup, you generally want a base coat or at least a puddle of paint in the center to uh, put your open cup or to flip your floating cup. And so that is what we're doing here. So I'm just spreading this out. I don't need to have this uh, super pretty or anything. I just want a, a layer of black on here. And then I put quite a bit of black paint on. So all this excess, I'm going to just kind of scoot to the center of the canvas. And that will actually act as my puddle. And if I need any more, I can pour a little bit more on. But that's looking actually pretty good. Cool. All right. Now I got some air bubbles in there. So I'm going to uh, torch this quickly, I think, just to pop some of those. My puddle is pretty nice. I don't think I need to add anything else. So that's awesome. I'm going to grab my torch. And let's pop some air bubbles. And people sometimes ask me if you could use a heat gun for this. And you certainly could use a heat gun. Uh, it takes uh, a little bit longer just because the heat gun has to heat up a little bit. Um, but I find the torch is a little more uh, convenient because with the heat gun, uh, when you're done with it, you got this really hot uh, end of the heat gun, and you got to put that somewhere, which can be kind of um, dangerous. With this thing, you can just you know stand it up on a table, and it's pretty much out of the way. I've got a few more uh, air bubbles popping up. I'm not too concerned with getting all of them, just the majority of them. And I think we're in good shape. So I'm going to actually I'm going to take and move this banner out of there for now, so we can see better. Now, the time has come to flip our cup. And in order to do that, I'm gonna hold my cup in one hand, and I'm going to put my little uh, flipper on the other side, flip the whole thing over, just like that. And then I like to position the cup right over my paint puddle, and then very quickly, just jerk out my uh, chopper and drop my cup. And you'll get a little bit of you know, splash or whatever. That's okay. No problem with that at all. I'm just wiping my chopper off quick. Okay. So we're ready to go. Um, I've got a couple more little air bubbles. Not too worried about those though and pop them with my palette knife. So now we are ready to release the paint. And I have uh, my cup, I've prepared it already for an open cup. So I have poked a hole in it and I covered that with tape and I'm ready to pull my tape tab. 
and we're going to see what happens. So let's do it. I'm going to gently hold the cup and pull the tab and the paint will be released. And there it's go. It's going. And as the paint is coming out, I gently kind of tilt the canvas. So you can kind of control the paint puddle a little bit. Depending on the size of the hole, that determines how much, how quickly the paint escapes the cup. Um, you don't need a big hole at all. So a small hole will do. And I also like to kind of gently lift the cup. It'll release a little bit more paint out of there. And then you can, I want to kind of tilt that down. Let me bring my cup with me. We're kind of going off the edge there. So now I can take a look underneath my cup. And we've got, uh, let's see, I'm going to slide this down a little bit. We've got an interesting center here. You never quite know what the uh, is going to be in the center of the cup. Um, sometimes it's very cool. Sometimes it's very plain. Uh, we've got some interesting things happening. Um, and you have to kind of visualize this is all going to expand as we tilt. We've got a lot of awesome cells going on over here with the gold. So all this stuff is going to be expanded. I think I'm going to leave that alone because it looks very interesting. It's a very cool pattern of uh, shapes and colors. So I'm not going to mess with it. You could, if you had a very boring uh, center here, you could put the cup back on and kind of twirl it. Um, you could also do something, here, let me try this. Let me get a uh, one of my skewers. I've got these uh, skewers, they're very handy. And uh, one thing we could do at this stage, we could manipulate some things in here a little bit. Um, do a little bit of a, a twirl. And kind of right in here, I'd like to kind of twirl that out. Um, anything we do here will get uh, maximized and uh, magnified as we stretch. So uh, I don't want to go crazy with this, but this is kind of an interesting uh, thing we can do. So that's interesting. We added some interest, which I think is going to be, um, we'll see what happens when, when we stretch and tilt. So, so now we're ready to start actually tilting. I've got a little paint uh, going off the edge right there, but I'm not too worried about that. So the first stage, I just kind of, I want to expand my paint puddle a bit. So I'm just going to tilt it down. Let that paint puddle kind of cover more of the canvas. And you can always tilt and turn or turn the can or canvas. And so that's looking pretty good. Um, I really like what's happening over here. I think now we can, it's time to tilt and cover our corners. I'm going to cover this corner first because a lot of the paint is right here. So we're going to lose a little bit of these cells, but that is kind of inevitable with uh, tilting. We'll lose some things. And then as soon as I cover that corner, I'm going to tilt backward. And now, let's see, we've got three more corners to go. We can kind of choose uh, what we want. We don't, have to, we don't have to go in any specific order. I'm kind of covering up, I have a little spare spot here. I think I'm going to uh, cover this corner next. I, I actually like this line. Let me think about that, because that's a very interesting, it's a very interesting line. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll let that go for a moment. I want to uh, ponder that for a second. So I'm going to tilt off this one though. I think we, we have to get more paint off the canvas uh, or panel in this case. Um, so we have to tilt something off. I'm going to try this one. So I'm just going to let that paint kind of slowly move down there. I do like that gold. But 
unfortunately, it's going to go away. And so I'm going to tilt it back again. All right. So we've got a huge thing in the center, which is, uh, there's a lot of cool stuff happening in there, but um, we need to get that stretched out and moved uh, and repositioned and kind of expanded. So I'm going to tilt off of all four corners because we, we still have too much paint on here. We have to get rid of some and we have to alter this composition. So here we're gonna cover this corner. And then as soon as I get the corner covered, you can tilt back. And I'm liking that quite a bit. And I'm, I've pondered that, but I'm going to tilt off of this. Uh, we still have a lot of paint here and I really need to move, uh, I wanna expand this center of interest out. So we're going to stretch and tilt and cover this corner. I'm going to keep tilting a little bit more. There we go. Now I'm going to tilt it back. Very nice. I like this. Um, it does very much look like a galaxy. Carla mentioned that. That's what I'm thinking too, especially this uh, magenta up here. I really love that magenta. So, okay, so now we've got all the corners covered. Um, I'm gonna just kind of touch up a couple of these edges on my panel. I'm gonna turn this around and I'm just gonna, I just want to take a look at it and um, see what we wanna do, if anything. I'm going to wipe my hands off a minute so I can point some stuff out. And I'm really, I really like all the colors working together. Um, I especially love that magenta in there. This especially, I love that. So let's see, we've got a very interesting center. So our, the little um, things we did with the skewer created some, some interesting uh, lines and things like that. So we've got some cool stuff, but I want to kind of stretch this out and kind of expand this a little bit. Um, I love this area here. I love this, but I'd love this even more if we could maybe even expand this out a little bit. I don't know if that's possible, but the only way to do that is to go down here. So I think I'm gonna tilt some off of this corner right here just to try to open this up a little bit more. So we'll see what happens. I really like it, everything that's happening. Um, actually, let me take a look at that and I'm gonna think about that again because I really love this whole side. Um, maybe we could tilt off this corner, bring this down a little bit more and that'll open up things a little bit. Let me try that first. It's difficult sometimes when there's too much cool stuff. Um, but I think we could still, and you know, again, we don't have to do this. Uh, I just want to try to expand and uh, open up that center a little bit more. So I'm, okay. So I'm going to tilt back. So I like that. I'm going to kind of angle this down a hair and kind of stretch it. There we go. All right. Well, actually, I think I really like that. I think we helped it a little bit, not a ton, but I don't want to mess with this side. I love this magenta uh, corner up top. I think we helped bring that down a little bit more. So we have a little bit more of that. 
Um, I don't think there's anything else I really want to do to this. I don't want to tilt off this way because it'll mess with the magenta. Um, I don't want to tilt this way because it'll screw up this whole side. And if we tilt down this way anymore, we're going to be losing some of these cool cells. So I think, I think we're done with our uh, open cup pour. And that was pretty fast, but it turned out really cool. So I was not expecting such a, a galaxy uh, looking painting, but the purple and the magenta and of course the black, they really kind of lend themselves uh, to that type of a painting. But the, the gold, the copper, um, I love we have a lot of cool gold things happening. It really helps uh, add you know, a lot of values to the painting, all the gold, that's our lightest value. And uh, it's kind of scattered throughout, which I really love. So um, I think this is a, a successful painting. I'm pretty happy with it. So it's nice when they work out. So, all right. Well, I am uh, pretty excited about that. Uh, I'm going to let me just wipe my palette knife off. So that is all there is to it, really, with a uh, open cup pour. They don't always turn out like that, though. Um, this one turned out really nice. Um, sometimes they're a little harder. Sometimes you have to do more stretching um, and tilting of the paint to get a, a more interesting composition. Um, this one just kind of all worked out pretty nicely. So, you know, that's what we really want is a, you know, a cool painting that kind of comes together fast and the way, you know, I wasn't expecting this, um, which is always a good thing, but, um, but the no ex the very limited expectations really helped out with this one. So I love it. So I'm going to uh, uh, switch back and I'll check for any questions you might have. And let me here, let me go back to the, uh, let me go back to, Hello again. Well, that was pretty fun. I enjoyed that a lot. It's awesome when they work out, especially when it's a demo. Um, <laughs> so let me go back up here and see if there's any uh, questions. Um, okay. So I'm going to move this forward so I don't screw it up. And, uh, and we've also got a very awesome uh, puddle of paint underneath there which I'll probably scoop back up and put in uh, my cups and I'll use again at a later date. Um, okay. So I see everyone is saying, don't touch it. Stop. <laughs> so I've stopped. I hope I didn't stop uh, too late, but uh, okay. So I'm just checking to see if there's any questions. Um, And I'm seeing, thanks for all the great comments. I appreciate that. Um, let's see. I think Jerry asked how, what the size of this was. This was a 14 by 18, um, one of my panels, but a 14 by 18 canvas. Uh, you'd use the same amount of paint, which was uh, 10 ounces of paint total uh, in our layered cup. And let's see. All right, so I'm checking down. Is there any other questions that you had about the process or the colors or anything like that? Um, and welcome everybody who's just joined us or joining us during the uh, the painting. Sorry, I, I was uh, you know it's hard to watch the uh, the comments when you're when you're tilting. But um, thank you for all the great comments. And I uh, hear Carla is asking me. Uh, how big a hole did you put in the side of the cup? It's a very small hole, Carla. Um, I've actually used like my skewer, like this. Uh, this I would consider a very big hole. This is about, uh, this is just one of those bamboo skewers you'd find at the grocery store. Um, I used my trusty uh, awl, which is about, uh, it's about half the size of this. So this is about an eighth inch, I'd say. 
an eighth inch uh, hole. So, but you, I would say uh, you'd want something a little bit bigger than like a push pin. Um, I've used uh, just like a big jumbo push pins before like this. These work fine too. Um, so if, if that's all you have, that's fine. Um, but a little bit, a little bit larger hole, but if you go with a really big hole, uh, the paint really shoots out of the cup so fast. It can, it can really um, kind of take off on the canvas and can have trouble kind of controlling the paint puddle. So I'd say any kind of a, a smallish, you know, 16th inch to eighth inch hole or whatever you can find really. But uh, it doesn't have to be huge. So, okay. And um, thanks, Linda. Linda says she thinks it looks very Halloweeny. It does look very Halloweeny, I think. So it's a nice fallish Halloweeny, Halloweeny-ish um, uh, combination. And throw some cosmic stuff in there too. So uh, thank you, everyone, for the great comments. Um, uh, Donna is asking, is it hard to make panels? Uh, it is not really hard. It's not super hard. You do have to have some equipment, some tools, like um, a table saw is very handy, or a circular saw is very handy. Uh, if you have that, a chop saw, like a simple chop saw, that's really all you need. Um, I'll do a demo of making some panels in the membership. Um, we can, I'll show you how to make a very simple panel. Um, and you just need some, some wood glue, and uh, you don't need clamps or anything like that. I'll show you, well, you do need some weights would be helpful, but I can show you how to make a simple panel. Um, a lot of places, if you go to Home Depot, uh, you can buy a thin uh, birch veneer, or if you have a lumber yard in your area, uh, the birch veneer I like to use, it's called Baltic birch. It's kind of a high-end uh, birch veneer. Um, you could probably find it pre-cut online some places. If you have like a rockler woodworking, in your area or something like that, they would have Baltic birch. Uh, and then the, the cradle part is made out of uh, a wood called basswood. And it's a very lightweight wood. It has very, uh, no grain really. Um, it's a very stable wood and it's straight. Um, that might be a little harder to find. You probably have to go to a lumber yard or a specialty store for that. But that's a very traditional uh, way to make panels is basswood in a and Baltic birch panels. But I'll talk about that in the membership. We'll do a, a demo, a tutorial, how to make panels if you want to try that out. They're really fun to work with. I love them. Um, and you can also buy panels. Uh, I think the cheapest place that I've found to buy panels pre-made uh, is probably a place called Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. Um, and they're still not, they're not as cheap as like the cheap canvases. Like those things you can get a, you know, a pack for about a dollar. Um, the, the birch panels, I mean, the cheapest you'll probably get is the, like an eight by 10 is probably about $8. So, or, and, and it goes from, up from there. Um, so they are a little more pricey. It's a, uh, it's probably comparable to the uh, very nice cradled canvases, the, the, I think series three or whatever they call them that you get at Michael's, the really nice ones, the professional grade uh, canvas, uh, cradled one and a half inch gallery rack canvases. Uh, the panels are probably comparable to that. Um, but, uh, but they're great to work on. I love them. So let's see, that was a long answer. Sorry. <laughs> um, oh, Diane is asking uh, when you flip the, Flip the cup, you said something about a tab. Yes, I'll demonstrate that. Uh, my cup is all messy, I'll get a new cup. Um, I think I have some down here. Okay, so this is um, just a regular old cup, like a drinking cup or whatever. Now, what you wanna do is you take, I'll take my awl and I will poke a hole in the top of the cup like that so there's a little hole there and that is where the paint's going to come out and then I take some scotch tape some regular old scotch tape 
take a piece of that out and then I make a little tab. So I fold it over, but there's still a small sticky side, sticky part showing. And then I just put, this is probably hard to see, I just put the tape right over the hole and then burnish it down really good. And then you got your hole ready to go. You've got tape covering the hole. So when the cup is on your canvas, all you need to do is kind of gently hold your cup, pull the tab off and the paint will emerge. But there's another way to do it also. You could, uh, you could wait until the cup is on the canvas, take a push pin or an awl or something, and then poke a hole in the cup at that time. Um, I found that having the tab uh, works much better for me. Um, it can be a little difficult to kind of pierce the cup. It depends on the cup, cup as well uh, when the, the cup is on the canvas. So I invented this uh, method back when I was teaching uh, when I was teaching this technique in my live workshops. Um, and I'd prepare the cups for the students. So all they had to do was just pop the tab and whoosh, paint comes out. Um, and it works great. But that's how you do it. It's very simple. And that's a good question though, Diane. And Jerry is saying, I hope, does, does that make sense, Jerry? I hope so. Um, we're just basically put, poking a hole in the cup, covering it with tape uh, so the paint doesn't come out uh, before we put it on the canvas. Then we pull the tape tab off. I hope that makes sense. Uh, Noval is asking, uh, silicone? Nope, no silicone whatsoever. Uh, these are all just regular paints. Uh, this is the easy formula. I use the easy formula, which is uh, the one part paint, two parts Floetrol for this one, but uh, no silicone at all. Um, we got a lot of cool cells because of the Amsterdam gold. That tends to make a lot of cool cells. Also, we had um, some copper in there, which copper made a few cells too. And also, the one of the secret tricks is the high pour can also cause a lot of cool cells to be to, uh, to be generated. So cool. All right. And uh, JC uses the large push pins. Yep, those work just fine too. Um, those work just fine. Basically, you just need a, some kind of hole in there, and the hole. Um, releases the vacuum out of the cup so the paint can uh, can, can flow out into the, your base coat. Um, it's very scientific, I know. Oh my gosh. Uh, and then uh, Diane asked, do you do the hole before you flip? Yes, I do the hole. These are probably old questions. I need to like hurry up and answer them. But I do, I prepare my cup first, make the hole, cover it with tape so it's all ready to go before I uh, layer my paints. Um, but you don't have to. You could just poke it, you know, poke it with a pin when it's on the canvas too. That also works fine. And all right. And Carla is saying, <laughs> I had no idea there are so many saws. Oh, there are many, many saws. Believe me, those are just three that I mentioned. Um, but there are lots more than that. So there's a lot of saws. I have a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> Shirley, Shirley's happy I stopped. Thank you, Shirley. I'm very happy I stopped too. Um, yeah, I love I really like this painting. I think it turned out great. <laughs> so <laughs> Navala is yelling as well. So I hope, I hope I didn't cause any anxiety. You know, I know this can be a very tense yeah, stressful um, art form. And, um, and uh, yeah, Donna likes the, the idea of panels. I love panels uh, or any surface that doesn't have the canvas texture. Um, I think that canvas texture kind of detracts from the effects of the paint. Um, so I'd like to stay away from like the canvas texture or at least minimize it. Uh, to an extent. And you can minimize it as well if you uh, gesso over it first. Um, a couple coats of gesso and sanding, you can really minimize the canvas texture a lot. But panels are just great. 
because uh, panels, again, they won't, they won't get uh, loose on you because so much paint on there will make the canvases kind of get loose over time. Um, so, but panels will never do that. But you do have to prepare them correctly. So, but I'll show you how to do that in the membership. Uh, we'll get to that. And cool. Hey, Jerry, welcome. Jerry is new. Thanks for joining us, Jerry. And uh, Linda is asking, uh, what color would you not use? Um, well, in this particular painting, uh, the colors I probably would not use. See, we had a lot of, we had gold, which is kind of a yellow. We had red and copper. Those are both kind of um, reddish colors. Uh, they have a lot of red in them. We had the uh, magenta is also has a lot of red and a little bit of blue or purple, you could say. Um, so magenta is a, a very, very warm purple. And then we had purple, which has red as well. Um, purple is a combination of red and blue. Um, so we have red throughout this whole painting. What I probably wouldn't use, um, although it might look very cool, um, if the, the, the riskiest color to use in this combination would be green uh, because green is the complement of red. And uh, so red and green, when they combine and mix, um, they can get uh, muddy, they can get muddy or because they want they want they want to cancel each other out basically. Red and green will cancel each other out and create like a grayish, um, gr a grayish brownish color. Now we could use green because um, green and red are fantastic together. Um, like Christmas time, you know, is red and green. Those are complementary colors. They're, they, they're called complementary colors because um, they work so well off of each other. They're opposite on the color wheel, but we'd have to figure out a way to to incorporate the green without uh, having it touch the red. So we could use what would be called a barrier color. So we had black in this painting. So the black uh, could potentially be used as a barrier color. So we, if we put a red layer down and then a black layer, we could put a green layer next and then the red and, and green aren't like directly in contact with each other. Um, also the gold would act as a good barrier layer um, the gold, the green and the gold would form more of a lighter green. Um, but gold does not like to blend exactly the same as yellow does. So it's easier to use gold as like a barrier color. At least that's what I found. So, but green would be the riskiest color um, because uh, green and reds like to create mud. But they could look amazing together. So it's kind of, if it's a risky proposition. Um, but um, are there any other colors I probably wouldn't use? Um, just thinking. So you could put blues in here and then it would be more of a reddish and red and blues. Um, but at some point you have to kind of figure, you have to kind of come up with some kind of a color scheme. It's best to have some sort of a plan. This plan was mostly like a really warm reddish, uh, red and purples. Um, type of a color scheme. But I was going for more of like a fall color slash Halloween-ish kind of color. Um, now, if we put that crazy green in there, um, where is it? This one, the crazy like lime green, neon green, um, we would have had a whole different you know, type of painting. But the cool thing with paint pouring is it might be amazing. So, um, I would not be adverse to trying it out because this would add a very different dimension to this to this painting. So again, but you'd want to maybe use a barrier color between this and maybe the red. So the black would obviously be a good one. Um, and this would this would have made it a much more Halloweeny, crazy, weird painting if we had used the green. I'm kind of tempted to try one now because um, you never really know what's going to happen. Uh, until you try it. So, but, uh, but I hope that kind of, that was kind of a long winded um, way of saying green, but um, I kind of want to try it with green now. So, but that's a great question, Linda. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. So 
Um, yeah, Sammy thinks it looks like a galaxy. Totally. I love the way it looks like a galaxy. And uh, so I'm, I'm behind on the questions, everyone. Um, I'm trying to uh, uh, speed up. Uh, Jan is asking if I put the flow trial in the paints. Yes, this was uh, my easy mixing formula, which is one part paint, two parts flow trial. And depending on the color, a little bit of water. I put a little bit of water in all of these paints, but uh, a little bit more in some, a little bit less in others. But that was the formula. It's a very, very easy one. Two to one. And that's a great question, Jan. And uh, uh, Jerry is asking about uh, gessoing. Um, can you uh, do a tutorial on, on gessoing and sanding? Absolutely, sure. Um, we could probably do like a, uh, that would be more of like in the membership, we do things called a uh, studio chat. So that would be kind of a good studio chat, like a panel slash um, prepping panels and gessoing because we have to gesso panels too. So we could, I could show you how to also gesso canvases to get them smoother. So yeah, that'd be a great idea, Jerry. Awesome idea, I, we will do it. And Deborah's excited about panels too, yes. Yeah, we'll do panels. I'm not sure quite how I'll do that. Um, <laughs> I'll have to figure it out. Uh, might have to go into my shop for that one, um, but I'll figure it out. Uh, oh, oh, Donna is um, not feeling well. I'm sorry, Donna. I uh, hope you feel better, Donna. Oh my gosh. Get well soon. Um, drink some soup. So I hope she is better. Donna is one of our members and she's awesome. And let's see. Yes, thanks for all the great comments. Um, everyone is um, saying great things for Donna, which is awesome. Thank you guys. And Monique, thank you. Diane, thank you so much. Janice, thank you. My gosh, that's awesome. Um, and then JC is, uh, be careful with the gold. Yes, the gold can take over for sure. I used it about three, four different times in this one. So, um, but some golds are, will really, really take over. The 24 karat gold from DecoArt especially loves to take over paintings. That is a, a volatile gold. So, and uh, Kim asks, um, this is a good question. Um, since air can't get through the panel, do you have a problem with cracking? Um, no, never. Um, because air really doesn't want to get through the um, gesso either. So, and once the paint dries, especially acrylics, you know, it's like a plastic film. So um, you really don't have to worry about cracking and like airflow, things like that. Um, cracking really occurs, as far as paint pouring goes, the number one cause of, of cracking, in my opinion, is you have too much paint on your surface. So there's too much paint on the canvas um, or the panel, depending on what you're painting on. And, and the way acrylics dry, they dry from the top down. So if there's a really thick layer of acrylic, uh, acrylic paint, the top will start to dry, the bottom will still be wet. And when the acrylics dry, they shrink. So the top will start shrinking, the bottom is still wet and that causes the cracks and the fissures to occur. So um, that's, that's the number one cause of cracks. Um, at least that's what I think. Um, and as far as everything I've seen and talked to many, many different painters, that's, um, as far as I'm concerned, the number one cause. And I think a lot of people use way too much paint on their canvases. So I have something called a, a, a canvas coverage cheat sheet, which has a chart and it's, it's, I've created that through trial and error over many, many paintings on how much paint to put on different size canvases. You can find that on my um, website actually, um, if you wanted to pick one up. Um, so I started to charge for that. So it's a couple dollars to get that because there's like three different charts in there. But um, that'll tell you how much paint to use um, for different size canvases. And, and I've never had, I've, I've had some painting crack, of course. Um, everyone has. 
Uh, but the ones that I've had, my experiences with cracking were more from uh, inferior uh, products. So some white paints will tend to crack when they dry. Um, and especially like house paints have a tendency to crack, especially if there's too much of them. So, uh, but we don't have to worry about the panels or um, airflow um, because basically the canvas is, 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 is not going to pre prevent air any airflow as well. What you want with a canvas, a stretch canvas, you want a little bit of airflow um, because it's on a uh, canvas, you know, the canvas is a fabric. So you don't want that to get, um, that can, that can have a tendency to uh, tighten and loosen depending on the humidity and the, uh, the weather, the temperature, things like that. That's why I love the panels is because they will never expand or contract, um, like a canvas will. So they won't really get loose and floppy like a canvas. And that can be a very, a big problem, uh, because you can only retighten the canvas so many times. Um, before you really have to just take it off the stretcher bars and re-stretch it um, completely. So it can be kind of a big a big problem, uh, especially when there's so much paint that we're using on our canvases. But I still use lots of canvas, don't get me wrong. So I love canvas too. Um, all right. And JC says, uh, sometimes I plan my colors. Um, okay, so once every every ten pours, I plan colors. Yeah, like you know, hey, you know, I am all about just experimenting, picking some random colors, going and uh, throwing them together, and see what happens. Um, experimentation and just uh, playing around is is a huge benefit. Um, you know, planning is is great, um, but you kind of have to know, you know, what you're planning for. So. Uh, you have to kind of get a lot of experience with different colors in order to plan them. So if you're just um, really new to paint pouring and colors and color theory in, um, uh, in general, then, you know, just playing around, experimenting with different colors, seeing what you like together, seeing what uh, works together. Um, there's always time to learn color theory, um, which can, you know, that's never a never ending, you know, uh, project right there. You know, I mean, it'll take you forever to learn everything to know about color, but uh, just playing around, experimenting, having fun, starting with the colors you really love is my number one uh, recommendation. So uh, if you love blues and you love like ocean colors or things like that, play around with blues and see what um, you can find that works really well with blues. Um, but just start with what you like, and then you can kind of work out from there. Um, but yeah, I think uh, playing around and testing out colors and different color schemes and color uh, uh, color things is awesome. And let's see. Uh, Donna asks, uh, would metallic colors make good uh, good barrier colors? Uh, might be uh, fun to try a Christmas pour with red, green, and gold. Um, yeah, I think in my experience, uh, metallics tend to make pretty good barrier colors because they don't quite mix the same as uh, the other pigmented um, paints. Um, but you can still get kind of the same color. Just like I use, I use gold all the time, but I rarely use yellows because um, golds just are a lot easier to work with, uh, with paint pouring and they look better too, I think. Um, I love the shine and metallic, you know, luster of gold. Um, but yes, uh, another good color to, that is a barrier color would be silver. Works works very well. Um, and also, let's see, red, green, and gold. Yeah, you want to put something in between the red and the green. So gold would be a good choice. Uh, silver also, maybe. Um, you could try metallic white. And metallic white um, is a little different than regular white. Um, so it doesn't mix quite the same as like a titanium white, but you will, it will kind of, uh, you will get more pinks with the reds and you will get more kind of a lime, lime greens or um, the minty greens with, uh, with the metallic white. Um, but that could all kind of play right into a Christmas theme. But uh, I'd give it a shot, Donna. That's a great question. And Lee is out. Bye, Lee. Thanks so much for joining. 
Um, and uh, she was up late. Oh my gosh. So, okay. I'm sorry. I'm getting down there to the, uh, and Monique is asking, uh, please do another painting with green, Brad. I will do one. I can't do one right now because I don't have enough paints, but uh, I'm excited to try that out. I think that'd be really cool. So I'll do one, Monique, for sure. And uh, and Monique, good night. <laughs> Monique, Monique has left. And uh, all righty, let's see. I'm, get, I'm working my way down. And oh, um, Elsie has a good question. Uh, what is a multi-surface paint? Um, oh, there are, those are mostly craft type of paints. Um, uh, it's like in the little, the little, I don't have one right next to me, the little two ounce bottles, like Deco Art makes them, Apple Barrel makes them, Folk Art. They have a uh, one, it's a, it's called a sheen, is a uh, multi-surface. Basically it means a satin sheen of paint or sometimes they're glossy sheens, which is a multi-surface. It just means you could put that on, you could paint a lot of different stuff with it because it's craft paint. Uh, so you could use it for like art things like canvases, but you could paint it on uh, ceramics or glass sometimes. Um, basically multi-surface, it just means what they're talking about is you'll get more of a, a semi-glossy sheen. Um, sometimes that's for like outdoor paints are multi-surface. Um, but you could use that paint with acrylic pouring. As long as it's acrylic paint, you can use it. And all those types of paints are fine to use. I've used many, many of them. So, uh, but mostly it multi-surface is referring to the, um, the sheen the paint will take on when it's dry. So there's a matte, which is a very dull sheen. A satin is kind of a medium uh, sheen. And then there's glossy sheen, which is very shiny. So satin is kind of in the middle there. So I hope that answers your question, Elsie. And uh, Jerry is asking, so for this canvas, you use 10 ounces of paint and you layered the cup twice uh, with each paint. How much did you put in each individual cup? Uh, okay, I think I'm, I think I am uh, getting your question, Jerry. So basically I mixed up, um, I mixed up about three ounces of paint. Um, and I did a test painting first before this, so I used a little bit of paint. Um, so I usually mix up between three and four ounces of each color. So uh, I have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, I had, and black. I had six colors. So if you take 10 ounces um, and you divide that by six, you know, that's like an ounce and a bit, you know, like ounce and you know, one and a quarter ounces, something like that. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, I generally mix up more paint than I'll need. But, uh, but if you look at the canvas uh, coverage cheat sheet for the different sizes, um, the way I kind of do that is I'll determine the size first that I'm going to be painting on. So like a 14 by 18, I need 10 ounces total. So... Um, so I know, okay, 10 ounces, then I'll kind of figure out, well, how many colors am I going to mix up? And then, so let's say it's, uh, you know, three, four, five colors. Let's say if it's five colors, just, um, to make it easy, if I'm going to mix up five colors, well, I need at least two ounces of each color. If I'm going to use the same amount of each color. Now you don't have to use, uh, all your layers don't have to be equally the same. You could use more of one color and less of other colors. That's totally up to you. Um, uh, generally, I'll, I just start kind of dumping them in there. And sometimes I'll use less of a color if I don't want a lot of it. So like the black in this painting, I, I used a little less black than the other colors because I didn't want a ton of, you know, you know a ton of black in there. Um, but it's, it's pretty easy math. Um, I'm going to come out with another chart for the membership. Um, which is basically how much paint you'd want to mix for different size canvases, depending on how many colors. So I'll have like the canvas sizes on one side, colors across the top, like one, two, three, four, five colors. And then you can kind of cross reference and it'll give you a really handy, easy way of seeing um, like how much paint for, if I'm mixing up five colors and I want to do a 20 by 30, I'll need, you know, it'll give you kind of a, 
oh, I need at least five ounces of each color, something like that. So I'm going to, I'm working on that now. I'll put that in the membership soon. It's just a really handy, quick, uh, easy way to kind of figure out um, like the minimum amount of paint you would need to mix up uh, for different sizes. So, but that's a great, great question, Jerry. I hope I, I answered that question. Um, and Diane is saying, when I use Masters Pour Black, it always cracks. Um, I'm not sure what Masters Pour is. I'm not familiar with that brand, um, Diane. So I'm not quite sure what that is. But if it's always cracking, I would definitely go and move to another black for sure. All right. And uh, Diane is also asking, um, these panels, are they wood? Yes, they are uh, all wood. Um, the top is a, is a thin birch panel. It's a birch plywood panel. So it's like an eighth inch thick birch plywood. And then the cradle part is a uh, basswood, um, which is a uh, different type of wood. And then they're all glued together. But I don't pour right on the raw wood. You have to seal the wood with, um, it's kind of like an acrylic primer. And then over that, you have to put a uh, gesso. So it's uh, kind of a three-step process. You have to get your, your wooden panel. You've got to seal that um, wooden panel, probably two coats to be safe. And then you put probably one to two coats, I'd recommend two coats of gesso over that. And that's what you're pouring on. So you're, all the acrylic is being poured on a gesso surface. All right. And Navala likes the metallic white. Yes, I love metallic white. It's probably my favorite new color. And uh, Jim and Nancy, are saying, I've been uh, artsy since high school, but I've never fully under understood how to use a color wheel. Would it be possible to discuss that sometime? Absolutely. We are gonna be talking about the color wheel a lot in the uh, membership, so don't worry about that. Um, the color wheel is a fantastic tool. Uh, we're gonna talk all about it. It can be very complicated, but we're gonna start at very, you know, very simple and kind of work, work out, um, get more uh, complex as we go. But the color wheel is a, a wonderful tool, but you kind of have to know how to use it correctly. Um, I think there's a lot of misconception about the color wheel. It's basically just kind of a, like a guide for you. Um, and a lot of people take it really literally, um, but we're not gonna, it's not really meant to be taken super literal. So, um, because there's a lot more that goes into color theory than just the color wheel, but we're gonna dig into that uh, in depth for sure. So. That's a great, uh, great comment, Jim and Nancy. Um, Ellis says, if, had you high poured the copper, would it have the same effects? It might have. Um, I only wanted to do one because I wanted the gold to be a little more prominent. Um, but yes, metallics tend to generate cells. So um, the copper might have done uh, some interesting things. We do have some copper cells throughout this. So the copper did uh, generate some cells. They're a little more subtle in the painting. But yeah, um, if you went and did the high pour, it's very likely the copper would have generated some more cells too. Cool. Good uh, question, Ellis. Well, thanks, Diane. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. A lot of great comments. Um, Libby has got to run. Uh, thanks for joining us, Libby. I appreciate that. Um, JC <laughs> does not like the, the word color wheel or Dutch pour, but you're gonna like it, JC. I'll teach you how to love it. Okay, hopefully. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, there's nothing to be scared of with the color wheel, believe me. Um, and uh, it's a fun, it's a fun tool once you kind of know how to use it. And uh, cool, okay, <laughs> yeah, Jim and Nancy. So it's just Nancy. So um, yeah, they share their Facebook page. So 
Okay, Nancy. So Jim is off doing something else probably. All right, awesome. Cool, well, I think I reached the end of the questions, which was, uh, there were a lot of great questions. So thanks so much for joining me, everyone. I think, um, unless you have a, a last minute question, um, I think we'll wrap it up here. But uh, I, this turned out to be a great demo. I love the open cup pour. Um, I think the colors worked wonderfully. When this dries, I'll take a picture of it and I'll post it in the group, uh, in the in the in both groups, the free group, which is the acrylic pouring club, and then also the member group, and um, so you can see what it looks like. But uh, so, but thanks so much for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Uh, have a great weekend. Uh, do some painting. Try out the um, the colors we worked with if you want. I think I'm going to do this again with that crazy lime green. We'll see what happens. So, uh, and again, I'll I'll do up since we got a great painting. I will do up our um, uh, pouring journal, and I'll stick that in the membership. So, thanks so much, everybody. Uh, have a great weekend. I will talk to you very soon.